Hi, I'm Johnny, and this is not exactly comics altruism, but it works. As I mentioned in the previous episode, I have to give a quick disclaimer that I did not go to school for this. I went to school to be a chef, not for English, not for writing, not for any of that stuff that's so important to comic book writing. But I did want to kind of maybe help anybody out who hasn't had time to think about the process, as I have. Luckily, I have the kind of job that just gives me hours and hours to think about things. So with all that said, I have no idea if my methods are actually the way that other people write. I've read some interviews, I've listened to some interviews, but I don't really know whether or not it's the proper way. But I figure if this is how I do it, then chances are somebody else will have some use for my methods. All right, so as I mentioned last time, you work on the characters at the same time as you're working on your outline. If you start your outline and say your, your arc is going to be six issues long and you haven't figured out what your protagonist's motives are or any of that stuff, when you start writing, that whole outline for the next five issues could be shot completely because you didn't realize that the character who you have not gotten to know yet is actually motivated by something entirely different from what you had originally set out. So what you want to do is have a basic idea of what it is you're trying to express, and how you're going to express it through certain characters. My little mini story that I have here, we're going eight pages because it's nice and short. You, I can actually write it in front of you here in the course of however many episodes it takes. Anybody who's seen The Curse of Oak Island, well, if you haven't, maybe stop this and go watch an episode or at least the intro to The Curse of Oak Island. What I'm doing with that is that it's going to be a little mini story and it's going to be based loosely on that. I'm not going to be breaking any copyright. And it's going to tie in with the whole Sasquatch theme that we have going on, Chad the Duke and I, for our Sasquatch comic. I'm hoping that maybe we can turn this into like a free PDF that we give to people who purchase our second issue on Kickstarter, or maybe even the first, who knows. We're not done the, the first one yet, so it's probably better for me to just say sometime in the future. So what I've got is a list of the people in the show, and what I'm going to do is turn them into kind of caricatures. And I've decided that it's going to be kind of on the goofier end of things, and I hope it's not offensive to the uh, Lagina brothers and all of the people who work with them. Nobody's going to be seeing this anyway. Uh, all right, so... Here's my list, and as I mentioned last time, these recipe cards are essential. You can carry them with you, jot down notes, you can get one of those little notebooks or whatever. They're how you're going to remember the stuff that's, that you've got going through your head. Stephen King said that he doesn't bother writing anything down because any idea that's good enough, he'll remember it, which is a great policy. However, it doesn't work for me because my memory is garbage. What I have here is a template for a character sheet. And as you can see, I've left enough room on the side here so that if I was to hand these off to Chad LeDuc, he could do sketches or whatever to figure out how he wants the character to appear. And I have all that stuff kind of set out here. Uh, the reason for a lot of these fields here is because I'm normally basing it on something that I come up with on my own. Uh, it's not based on reality like this thing is. So a lot of these I'm just going to forget about, but character names. Now, I've decided to give every character from Curse of Oak Island a name that either rhymes with or resembles uh, people that actually exist. So, Mick Lagostina, in case you can't figure that out, that's Rick Lagina. Uh, his date of birth, we're going to say, is March 24th. What would that be, like 1960-something? So, we'll just say 1950. And then we put age, 70. That just makes it easier for your artist to figure out how to draw the character. Uh, just summarize that for them. Uh, occupation. I think he was in oil. I might be mistaking him with his brother. Either way, we'll say oil tycoon. That's how they got the money to do this whole like ex excavation of Oak Island. Uh, height. I seem to remember that he's relatively tall. And weight is healthy, so we'll say that body type. Um, let's 
built like a former manual laborer who is now old. So its hair is dyed brown. He has long-ish. I kind of make some insinuations when I fill these things out. <clears throat> so like there is often a motivation for why people wear their hair the way that they do. And so that's one of those. Uh, I call it doesn't matter, skin tone, gray, gray key. I'm choosing to make this character look like the actual guy looks naturally handsome with bifocals. I don't know if he actually wears bifocals. Bifocal glasses, wiry eyebrows to show intensity. That's basically true, right? Uh, dresses. This is important, too, because everybody dresses with a certain motivation for why they dress the way they dress. Um, dresses distinguished. The language doesn't have to be perfect here. Like, it can be flawed. Um, all the, the next stuff doesn't really matter for what I'm doing here, but uh, uh, white, okay, American birthplace. America, um, English, I don't think he speaks anything else. Yeah, the reason I have most of these fields here is because if I ever get into writing anything like sci-fi or fantasy or anything that's a little bit far out, I'm going to need to know uh, all of this different stuff. Religion and beliefs, again, like if there's if there happens to be like a cult in my next book or something, although I sort of allude to that in Sasquatch Klondike, uh, whatever, we're just going to say that he is agnostic humanitarian and so for virtues i'm also going to choose closer to reality here he has an iron will and undying optimism he's fastidious this stuff matters more for you as the writer that's why you need to set this stuff out now is because it'll affect the way that you write these characters moving forward yeah that's good enough i'm just kind of writing a sketch out for you guys uh, vices. He is uh, ambitious to a fault. And he, I don't know the word I'm looking for here, but he doesn't know when to quit, which is simultaneously a good thing with the undying optimism. Doesn't work so well if 10 years from now he's still doing what he's doing and he hasn't made any more progress, uh, which they're constantly making progress, whatever. Uh, strengths. That kind of is summarized sort of in the uh, virtues and vices. I suggest you copy these things out and make your own sort of template because this has been essential in the writing of Sasquatch Klondike. Like I did 19 character sheets and it kind of helped me to keep the character straight and it definitely helped Chad the Duke to keep the character straight. His 19 characters, I was writing for the entire arc, getting the characters set out rather than just who we're introduced to in the first issue. Uh, strengths, weaknesses, yeah, we're just gonna leave all this because this is already running a little long. His fears, maybe we're just gonna say he's afraid of Sasquatch. I doubt Rick Lagina would be afraid of Sasquatch because he's not afraid of shit. Um, talents, yeah, let's just say he has a profound ability, ability to absorb knowledge which is true he'll make references to stuff that they found like seven years ago and it just pops up and he'll just mention it uh, his family would be his brother uh, and I have a name for everybody already set out here but his brother Bertie Lagostina and uh, I guess that's it as far as the characters that we're concerned with it might also help if you were to <clears throat> put in say past loved ones or dead parents uh, i'm assuming that his parents are dead they might not be you know or like if he lost a, a wife or something no that's too much gravity this is not supposed to be a serious sort of book and then this one here is the most important field all right so the notes are definitely important this is where for sasquatch klondike i chose to write some backstories for people Nick was bullied in high school by the football stars and learned resiliency 
through the negative experiences and decided the best escape from these pricks was to develop his mind. Uh, we're going to say that this makes him incredibly sensitive to aggression as he has PTSD from these experiences. I do want to make it readable, something that could immerse him in the character a little bit more. In this case, you're my audience, so I, again, I don't want to write it totally um, dismissively or whatever. Uh, he has PTSD from these. Yeah, he has PTSD. His appreciation for his current mode of existence is exceptional. This contributes to his undying optimism and fresh perspectives on greed. Because he's not really doing his thing out of greed, he's doing it out of the wonderment of history and of archaeology and all that stuff, and just the legend and the lore of it all. So, um, fresh perspectives on greed versus exploration, because they're not one and the same. That's good enough for now. Uh, so that is what we call a full character sheet, even though I didn't really finish it off. I've got two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve characters that I have to write up. It's only an eight-page story, so I might cut some of these. That's another reason why you want to write out these character sheets before you've actually written out your outline, or in the process of writing out your outline. Because you never know, you might write a character into your outline that you realize you have to cut because you just simply don't have space. And I ran into that in issue number one, I think, of Sasquatch Klondike. I've written two of them, two and a half of them so far. And that's a problem that I ran into. So definitely you want to juggle between outline, character development, outline, character development. All right, so that'll be it for today. Just giving you a quick example of how I write characters. All right, enjoy writing. Bye. Bye.